hey, this may look familiar to you, but I'm going to show you a different way to image process. Hey, this may look familiar to you, but I'm going to show you a different way to image process. After x-raying the patient in the x-ray room, you have to put the film in film screen processing into the pass box into the dark room. This box is a lead-lined box that protects the film from exposure to x-rays. Welcome to the dark room. This is the other side of the pass box. This has an unexposed and exposed side just like it did on the other side. The film on this side is unexposed and ready to be used. The film on this side is the image that we just did. Let's take it out. After you remove the exposed image from the exposed side of the pass box, we have to run it. You're going to have patient information and your cassette. Put your patient information into your patient ID stamper or film stamper open your cassette, take your film out, now that your patient's information is properly exposed onto this piece of film we can process the image. We're going to put it into the tray. This is the processing tray. If you will notice the size of the feed tray into the processor is different size than the film itself. The film can be ran crosswise or lengthwise. This will be determined by your image size and how many you want to run at one time. Now that you've decided which way you're going to run your film through the processor, you're ready to put it in. Engage the processor and push it in. The processing will take 90 seconds for an image to process. After the processor has made that audible beep, you know that you can load another piece of film into the processor. If you have no more to load, it's time to reload your cassette. However, this part needs to be done in the dark. So for purposes of this video, this will be done in the light. You will open your cassette and you'll get your film from the film bin. This film bin is a lead lined box as well. It is strategically placed film inside of it with 14 by 17s, 11 by 14s, 10 by 12s, and 8 by 10s. They're placed in there in an order that is known to the technologists so that when they open the bin in the dark, they know exactly which area to reach or go for to reload their cassettes. Now that you've retrieved your piece of film that is unexposed from the film bin, you put it back into your cassette, shut the cassette, make sure it is shut. It will either have a click or your cassettes will have toggle switches. that you will hear click. These are now ready to be put back into the unexposed side of the pass box. And these can be reused to x-ray your next patient. After you have processed your image, reloaded your cassette, we make sure that the film bin is shut. We make sure that the processing tray is empty or we have heard the beep from the processor that tells us that the film is down far enough that we could turn on the lights. After you've checked all these things, you can now open the door and go out and check your image. So now, this is the other side of the processor. You saw the processing side on the other side in the dark room with the processing tray. It leads into this processor. This is an Exomatic processor. It is a 90 second processor. It has a developer tank, a fixer tank, a wash tank, and a drying rack. The film that we put in will process through each one of those tanks and then be deposited right here in the front for you to take out 
and view the x-ray image that you just did. This is where you will check and make sure that your image is appropriate for the doctor to see. This processor is different than the processor we showed you earlier. This is a mini-med tabletop processor. It's a processor that you might encounter in a doctor's office. The Exomatic processor is a processor that you would see in a hospital setting. These two processors differ from each other because the processor that I showed you earlier, the tanks are deeper in it, allowing you to process more images at one time. This processor, the tanks are not as deep. You cannot process as many images at one time as you can with the previous processor. Now that we've talked about the processor, let's look at the guts, the inside of it. This is the feed tray, just like the Exomatic that you saw earlier. This is the feed tray of the Minimed. We have the developer tank, the fixer tank, move the dryer, and we have the wash tank that feeds up into the dryer. The developer tank has a crossover rack that feeds the film into the fixer tank. The fixer tank has a crossover rack that feeds it into the wash tank. The wash tank has rollers that feeds it up into the dryer. The dryer in the Exomatic looks much different. All of these rollers are run by a worm gear that runs cogs that turns all of the rollers at the same speed. Now let's take a look at the inside of this one, just to show you a little bit of difference between the two pieces of equipment. This is the inside. You have the feed tray that we saw before that leads into here. You have the developer tank. You have the fixer tank. And you have the wash tank that leads into the dryer. Again, here's the worm gears and the cogs that run all of the rollers at the same time. Here are the crossover racks that we spoke about in the other one. And let's look at the dryer in this one. This is the dryer. This is the cassette that we use in film screen processing. If you notice, it looks very similar to your CR cassettes that we use today. Let me show you some differences. This cassette is a film screen cassette. If you notice, it has what we call a blocker. And if you flip the cassette over, you can see that it is blocked on both sides. When you open the cassette, it will have a piece of film. and two screens. This is your blocker. Therefore, it will not expose this part of the image. This is where our patient information and identification goes before processing the film in the processor. Let me show you a CR cassette. This is a CR cassette looks very familiar to what you use in the clinical settings. It has an area that looks like a blocker. If you look on the back, it is not the same design. When you open it, there is no film and there is only one screen on one side of the cassette. We will get into the differences, the specific differences, of these two types of cassettes in the digital chapter. In film screen processing, there are many aspects of quality control, or QC, that must be performed either daily, monthly, or yearly on your equipment or the processing area. One of the daily QC processes that should be performed is on your processor. You need to make sure that the chemicals are processing correctly, and the way that we do that is using these pieces of equipment. We have a densitometer, a sensitometer, and your plain old graph paper. Every morning when a technologist comes in, they will turn the processor on, make sure the processor reaches the temperature that is desired. They will take a piece of film out of the film bin. 
expose it in the sensitometer, and put it through the processor. After processing, there will be a scale that the technologist will measure using the densitometer. They use certain selected numbers on the graph that they use every day. This way, there's continuity in your factors. You would measure, measure, measure. Those are recorded and plotted on a graph. Another thing worth your attention every morning when you come in is to notice the condition of your film. Your film should be stored in an upright position, not laying down. The film should be stored at around 68 degrees and 60% relative humidity. These things are very important to the processing. Another daily QC process that should be done is to maintain your workspace. The workspace must be clean and dry. If you do find something that needs to be cleaned or wiped off, you should use an anti-static product. You will simply wet a paper towel with your anti-static solution and wipe your counter down and make sure it dries before you process any images. Another thing you would like to look at every morning is the condition of your safe lights. If you will notice, the safe light produces red light. The color emitted from the safe lights is very important to us. These screens will emit either blue or green light, which your film will be sensitive to. The film will either be sensitive to the blue or green light, but they will not be sensitive to the red light. Anytime you add a safe light to your dark room, you must perform a safe light test. We will discuss this in class. An integral part of film screen processing is the chemicals involved during processing. We have chemicals in the developer and the fixer. The developer goes to the developer tank I showed you earlier. The fixer obviously goes to the fixer I showed you earlier. If you will notice in the developer tank, there is a brown condensation that happens from the developer tank. If you look at the fixer tank, there is a white condensation that happens from the fixer. On this mixing system, for this processor, it has indicator lights that let you know that the mixture has become low and needs to be added. The process of mixing the chemicals is very specific. These chemicals can be very dangerous if they touch your skin or inhaled. It is preferable that when you are putting new chemicals into this tank that you wear a mask and gloves. Your processor must be maintained by an outside company monthly. They will remove the developer rack, the fixer rack, and the wash rack. They will clean all three of these and replace them and put new chemicals in. The back of the processor will have these pipes that come out. This one is for the wash, this is for the fixer, and this is for the developer. These should be looked at routinely for leaks, cracks, or even drain stops. Please notice that the fixer piping runs to a separate unit before it runs into the main drain. The fixer removes silver from the processed film. The silver must be recovered in the unit and not allowed into the main drain. Another important aspect of film screen processing is venting the chemicals from the processor. This processor has a vent that runs out of the building. Check in your cassettes. Your cassettes should not be damaged or cracked. The bindings should be solid and not cracked. The screens themselves need to be checked for pitting or scratches or any foreign objects. If you find something on your screen, you would use your anti-static cleaner, clean the screens, set them up to dry, 
and then reload them with a piece of film. Well, that concludes the basics of film screen processing. To learn more about film, screens, and processing, and how it affects the image quality, talk to your radiography faculty, or review your textbook. Happy processing!